hearing on the news, the big news now, right? You go to an airport, you want to take a flight, what happens? You know. Right? I'm almost tempted not to fly anymore. We were going to go to Arizona in February, but I'm not so sure anymore. And I said, honey, why don't we drive? Oh, no, we don't. We did the Montana trip. That was long enough. Arizona's going to be even longer. Forget it. So I'm like, oh, so now what do we do? Okay, well, we do the x-ray thing, which can accumulate in your body, by the way, and who knows what happens if you fly long enough. But why are we instituting these kinds of things in the first place? Well, extra safety measures. And then we listen to NPR and people are saying, well, is it necessary? Yes, no, and you've got debates back and forth. Is it really needed and all this kind of thing? But the main concern is safety because you never know the potential problems. You know, they, they caught someone a while back and they had a potential blowing up the plane and we just don't know anymore. And there's that little thing on the, on the back of our minds, that little fear going on that says, well, we better be as safe as we can. I guess in Israel, they have quite an interview process before you even get on the plane. I can't even imagine what that's like. But their safety record is, is unbelievable. Nothing happens on Israeli air, airfares because their security is so tight and so rigid. But how far do we go? How far do we go with, with, with protecting ourselves? You know, how many uh, measures must we take before the walls we build for safety are the walls we build to keep others out and us in? And is that necessary? Jesus was talking with his peers on either side of him. They were peers because they were both sentenced, all three sentenced to death. And they knew it. And the first companion, compatriot, criminal, is concerned about his safety more than anything else. He's telling Jesus, save yourself if you're really, and us, of course, but I think that's the priority, save us, save me. And he doesn't quite get it, what's going on. And Jesus, his other uh, compatriot, his other friend on his other side, the other criminal number two, realizes what he had done, accepts his fate, and prays for something even deeper than physical safety. We live in a world that's, that's complex and turning more complex all the time. We have such things in our daily lives such as the Packers playing the Vikings today in football that's complex in itself because who do you vote for, Brett Favre or the Vikings or neither? I know what your answer is already, so don't even have to tell me that. How do we live in a world where fear is so prevalent and safety is of utmost concern to us? What is the measure of safety that we need to take before we start losing our sense of community? sense of the other, sense of the counterculturalness of what church is about, embracing, welcoming. How do we save lives? That's a big question, isn't it? The other debate that's going on, health care reform and health care issues. Does it save lives? What's the potential for saving lives? That's what we're concerned about, aren't we? We go about things in different ways. There are those who, who believe that we surround our borders, homeland security, and we keep make sure that we're safe so that nothing can hurt us from the outside. And there's a potential threat for great numbers of people to suffer. And then there's those who say, spend the money on more health related issues and save lives that way with medicines and techniques and, and technologies. The debate, the debate will continue to go on and we as Christians need to, to dive into that debate and find our place somewhere in there in the midst of it. And determine where we stand. We go across the lake 
We go across the oceans to different lands and different cultures to experience what they're like, what their cultures are like, their way of living. I can't imagine it would be like to go to Guatemala, for instance, and see what's going on down there. I was listening to a book on tape called Mountains Beyond Mountains, Dr. Paul Farmer and in in his, his efforts in Haiti. Eye-opening. In different lands that you have no idea, the safety is not an issue, but the health care is. That is what is killing people. How far do we push our safety borders until we start excluding other people? That's a hard one to think about and a hard one to talk about because it hits, hits home so much for all of us. And I'm thinking as I'm driving, listening to this Paul Farmer talk about his, or this man talk about Paul Farmer's life, and what, what would, imagine what it would be like if you were in a small village with earth floors and humble surroundings and you didn't have the conveniences of home. I don't know if I would like that so much. I like my internet. I like my TV and, and all those things that, 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 ha- that I have. I like the, the, the leisure time that I have to do whatever I want to do. Drive in the car and go to a movie or go to dinner and those kinds of things. I can't imagine what it would be like to not have that. To live from day to day and bare subsistence living. What that means. I've got all my ducks in a row here in this country in my own little house in my town and I don't know what it's like to be in another place. And I have a daughter who I watch carefully when I can catch her. (laughs) Don't run off in the department store, someone might steal you. You know, where does that come from? Why don't we think of those things? It probably in a million chance, but you never know. She's a cute little blonde, you know, someone could just take her and you never see her again. So, you know, don't run off. You carry and hold her hand. Now it's becoming more of I can, I can mind my own horse or something like that, so she doesn't want to hold my hand or sometimes. So we'll walk, and I just want to make sure she's not going in front of a car, running off somewhere. But safety for a little one is so important. You know, the potential for problems can happen. But how, how does it come that did I, if she's 18, I'm still wanting to hold her hand? You know, how kludgy is that? You know, am I overprotective? Am I doing more harm than good if I overprotect her? in some way. It's hard to know that balance. It's hard for us to know the balance between spending money on military, spending money on health. Where's that balance in there that that works for us? Where's the balance for us doing for us as opposed to doing somewhere else? Where's that balance? Safety becomes an issue. And we get confused. We're like Pilate. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with Jesus. Send him back to Herod. And Herod says, well, I can't execute him. Send him back to Pilate. And Pilate says, well, I don't want to do anything. He's, seven, he's innocent. There's confusion going on there. It wasn't decisive action. It was kind of push along with the crowd, whatever the crowd wants. Protect your political clout. Make sure you save face in, in terms of your constituency. So, where is that? Confusion. Are we as confused as they were once? In some respects, I believe we are. But here's the clarity of the situation. The criminal, the first criminal, is exhorting Jesus, if he's the Messiah, to save yourself and save us. Little does he know that that's exactly what Jesus is doing at that moment. He's saving their very souls and our souls at the very moment. Criminal 2 gets it. Criminal one, how ironic. Asking for physical salvation, receiving spiritual salvation. Whoa. That's exactly what Jesus was doing. And so when we contemplate this world, we go about our our actions, we go about our deeds, we go about our everyday lives in confused states sometimes, sometimes with clarity. But in the end, we we, we fall on our knees in in complete humility. And and all we can ask for And all we can say and all we can reply as the law, as we know it, crushes us down is Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And that's what it boils down to. And the reply to to the second criminal and to us is the same as it was back then and it is now. Today you will be with me in paradise. There's that hope. 
there's that new beginning, that safety net for us who long to keep safe. Amen.